be uh, a start. So let me just share slides. And let's have a discussion about uh, what uh, pricing, pricing strategies and uh, some basic types of pricing strategies that you can uh, take a look at before deciding on your own uh, pricing strategy for your products. So, um, so if there is any question or, or anything that's not clear, or um, if you can't hear my voice for any reason, just make sure to open your mic and speak. Okay, so uh, pricing strategy, and let's start with what we tell. So well, pricing strategy is uh, a method that's used to determine the best or the optimal price for a product or a service that you are going to get. So uh, you, when you set a price, it needs to be uh, a combination of, like the optimal co combination of uh, the cost it should cover the cost and it should guarantee internet. So uh, like it's the best price for uh, your product by taking account these things. So it drives re revenue, it influences brand perception. So for some brands uh, which are positioned in a premium uh, pricing, uh, have uh, like influence the people that are buying that they're buying a uh, brand, a, a better brand or something that, like that. There's no influences here. The brand is perception. For instance, Nike, uh, Adidas, you can pick or iPhones, and so on. And it affects your market position. So, where are you positioned? And it aligns uh, pricing with your goal in your market. So it's a very critical step for your product development. So the objectives are uh, maximizing uh, your revenues, uh, market penetrations. Ma market penetration means if you are new to the market, uh, you need to uh, penetrate the market by by uh, like setting a lower uh, a lower price than your competitors that way you can attract more customers uh competitive positioning where are you positioned uh, like in terms of your competitors uh customer retention so once the customers have like once you have customers like keeping those customers is going to depend on your pricing and of course your pricing like your profit margins okay so let's dive into uh like uh there are a lot of pricing strategies but we are going to take a look at uh, like the major ones so the first one is competitive pricing so as uh, the naming actually implies it's setting your price depending on your competitors so you could choose one of these three techniques when you are setting your price uh, according to your competitors you can match their price which is price matching so uh, your price your product is going to be the same price as of those uh, that are already uh, in the market or your competitors price undercutting means uh, setting a lower price uh, than your uh, than your uh, competitors this helps you uh, by gaining a larger market share uh, you can see i believe uh, like in the case of phones uh, you you can see iphones and samsung so samsung could have a bigger ma market share but uh, since iphones are uh, more expensive they have uh, like higher profit ma margin right and price le leadership is setting high price for the others to follow. So you are new, but you are going to set a higher price than that's already been uh, that's already been used. But your competitors are going to follow your footsteps and set their values or their prices uh, to match yours. So the pros of uh, using this strategy, the competitive pricing strategy is it's simple to, to implement and uh, maintains a competitive edge 
but this could lead to price war. war. So uh, price wars means, uh, for instance, you wanted to undercut the, the price of your competitors. So whenever you uh, like apply this one, when you whenever you are uh, like uh, using the undercut uh, pricing strategy, your competitors could actually uh, go beyond you and do this again and again. So it's going to be back and forth, and it's, you're gonna be in a pricing war. So this could uh, reduce profit, uh, reduce uh, the profits. And the next thing is uh, penetration pricing. So uh, penetration pricing is setting low price in order to quickly gain the market share. So you, you're gonna have a large market share and you, you're gonna gain this market share easily and quickly actually. So the goal is just to attract customers quickly and build like you know, the, the base of your customers, the customer base. So, it's effective when you are entering a new market, uh, when you are new, but uh, like low initial profits. Sometimes you you could even uh, get losses, or just operate in break even, uh, like on your break even. But uh, you're gonna get a lot of uh, customers and uh, potential for price sensitivity on other coin for this strategy. Uh, so, uh, is it clear so far, guys? Okay. Um, okay. So, the next thing is value-based pricing. So, this is just um, setting prices based on uh, the value that your customers have for your uh, product. So, what are they willing to pay? and uh, what does the customer need so uh, i believe in my opinion uh, some of the best examples could be uh, like iphones uh, like i have said uh, and uh, like uh, louis vuitton like this high-end uh, premium uh, luxury uh, ma materials are value-based prices so uh, they don't cost that much so uh, like the cost of an iphone could be uh, five hundred dollars, but it sold at a thousand and something, right? So it's more than double the, the cost. So they could sell it at a lower price, but since the but the customers have uh, like pre, a higher uh, value, have given it a higher value and are wi willing to pay the money, they are going to uh, like price it at that point. So this could lead uh, to a, a higher Mar margins like i've uh, said in the examples but it requires a deeper understanding of the customer what the customer uh, like is have perceived or how much the customer values our product so it's very sensitive very risky but high re highly highly um, rewarding thing, rewarding strategy so the next thing and the simplest maybe the simplest uh, type of Pricing strategy is this one, which, which is the cost plus pricing. So it's just uh, you have the cost, like the overall cost. It's going to be the product, the production cost, the marketing cost, the overhead cost, and everything. And add that with uh, your margin or what you are trying to get out of it, or your markup, uh, and you get the price. So it's simple and straightforward, but it ignores the market demand and competitive price. So, um, for instance, your competitors could have uh, a better production uh, like line and could be producing the same kind of products with a lower uh, cost. So they they could be have they they could have a lower price. So this is going to hurt you. And uh, yeah, okay. So the next thing is uh, dynamic pricing. So this is uh, li like, it's not static. Like uh, you, you don't have like one price, but uh, a dynamic one. So it changes with uh, that time and real time based uh, mar market demand. So, um, so for instance, uh, airlines tickets, event tickets, and some of the restaurants, I, I believe in the US are trying this. 
So uh, what is what it is is uh, it, it, like it changes the price, like uh, with time. So if you uh, if you go to uh, your local airline and check the prices, uh, like if you if you check in now and if you check the same ticket like uh, a few hours later or um, tomorrow, like a day later, the price is not going to be the same. So this is called uh, dynamic pricing. So uh, like the first that it is from the event you could charge less but the closer it is to the event or to the like, uh to the event you could charge more uh yeah so the pros are it maximizes revenue and the cons is uh it could lead to customer uh, dissatisfaction because it can be seen as unfair because um so i don't know yeah, about uh, like um other airlines, but here in Ethiopia, Ethiopia Airlines, if you buy a ticket, um, like let's say um, seven days from uh, the departure, and when you buy it like two days or one day be 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 before the departure, the difference in price sometimes could be double. So, the, like the customers could be dis dissatisfied and could see this as being unfair. Yeah, okay. Uh, so is it clear so far, guys? Or am I, am I moving too fast or too slow? Okay, okay, good. So um, the next one is scheming pricing. So this is um, just starting at a higher price and uh, like lowering it as time goes. So the goal is here to maximize revenue for uh, from early adapters. So uh, when you are uh, like uh, uh, I, I I don't know if they are classified into three into four. Uh, I'm confused there, but customers could be classified based on how uh, like how fast they uh, like try new meetings and adapt to new meetings. So we have early adapters. We have like uh, which people which uh, are willing to try new things like as soon as they drop, right? As soon as a new phone is like. Uh, released they are going to buy like they are they want to do like or they want to have uh, new things uh, before anyone else right they are they try new fashions new clothes new styles and so on right so these are called early adapters and uh, like there are like i believe uh, two in the middle and the last one are like late adapters which uh, like use things after everyone has tried them and uh, they go to reviews and see things and so on, right? So scheming pricing is aimed at uh, getting more profits from the early adapters. So the early adapters, since they want to get like these things early, they are willing to pay, to, to pay uh, a higher price because they want to experience beforehand than everyone else. So by using this psychology, uh, companies may uh, like may charge a higher price initially and like gradually drop the pricing uh, with time so you can see this in like uh, like everything actually in, especially in the western world you can see phones you can see clothes you can see like shoes and everything uh, like the first time they uh, introduce the product it's usually a higher uh, like price but as time goes it's going to drop uh, the price. So the pros are recovers cost quickly because initially it's it's uh, it's uh, pricing or charging higher, uh, and it capital it capitalizes uh, on early adapters. But it can attract competitors because you are actually setting a higher price, and the com like your competitors could uh, try to undercut you. Right? They could just uh like uh, provide the same uh, products for less money or less price so this could be uh like a problem for, for you and they may limit the initial market penetration okay so the next thing is premium pricing so these are uh, like uh, priced at a higher price 
just to have the feeling of premium or higher quality. Like I have said earlier, uh, you could have like the same uh, functionalities or the same uh, attributes from two different two uh, like phones or two laptops or something like, like that, but uh, one could be priced at a higher, a very higher price, and what could be the other could be priced at a lower price, but. Whenever you go to the shop and you see this uh, like change in or difference in price, uh, you could imagine like no, normally we imagine that the higher priced product is higher quality or like exclusive, right? Uh, yeah, so that's what they are trying to achieve, and the price is high ma margin and enhances brand perception. So your customers like like to show off their brands and so on, right? Especially in the fashion world, you could see that uh, clothes could be manufactured by the same company in China, but when, when they are sold in the Western world or in Europe and in places la like that, just because of the brand, like the two products could be sold uh, like uh, at a triple or at like four, four times the price of one another. So, uh, but it limits the customer base. You're gonna have a low number of customers, but they are willing to pay more. So you have a higher margin, but a lower uh, customer base. So uh, I'm I'm in a bit uh, noisy place, but can you hear me, guys? Or should should I change my location? Okay, good. Okay, so the next thing is economic pricing. So uh, this one is a bit different than uh, scheming price. So if you remember, scheming price uh, starts as a, at a higher price and lowers it with time. But economic economy pricing offers a product. Uh, no, no, sorry, not the, this one. Uh, okay, sorry. The economic pricing is economically like it's economic and it's prices uh, or offers the products at a lower price with minimal mar marketing. So uh, like joining brand, store brands, uh, when you go to, uh, I don't know, like I, I, I don't think we have a common store that does this, but uh, like big stores have uh, store brands that are not marketed in the TV or like things like that, but are available in the store. So they uh, attract price sensitive customers, customers who are not willing to pay uh, or who are not able to pay a higher price. So this could have a bigger, uh, a bigger uh, like customer base, but at a lower margin. So the cone is lower margin and uh, limited differentiation from your competitors. Okay, so the next thing is uh, psychological pricing. So this is used uh, like in a lot of uh, products uh, that you see. So like uh, here I have mentioned two types of psychological pr uh, pricing. One is charm pricing and anchoring. So charm pricing is going to like, it's, it's literally the same price, but uh, like psychologically, they are programmed to perceive to be uh, to have a higher di difference. So, if you can see nine nine uh, nine point nine dollars and ninety nine cents, and instead of ten dollars, so the difference is just one cent. But the psychologically, uh, the customer is going to have the feeling that it's uh, lower, much much lower than ten dollars. So this is called psychological pricing. And anchoring is uh, high in her price to uh, enhance uh, discount appeal. So, uh, so like uh, if you know like Black Friday and um, sales and so on. So the products are initially priced high, like higher than uh, they are normally priced. So, uh, so that later on they can uh, like show that it's on sale and it has like 10% discount, 20% discount, like something like, like that. But 
the discount is not really there like it's just there to make you feel like you have gotten the discounts right so it's just the strategy so it increases sales through perceived value but uh, like i've said it's not there really there but it's just perceived by the customers and uh, but it can be seen as, manip as ma ma manipulation. So, like I have said earlier, especially the anchoring one, um, it's very ma manipulative be be because, like, they are they are going to bring something that's le let's say that's being sold uh, at five hundred dollars, uh, like elsewhere, but they are going to mar market it as uh, le let's say uh, seven hundred and fifty dollars and they're going to show you uh, like we have given you like uh, 20 percent or 30 percent discount but like i've said the discount is not really there so they they are good just going to discount what they have added uh okay so uh selling uh, bundle price is uh, when you buy uh, in a bundle you're gonna have a lower price than uh, when you buy them se se uh, separately, sorry. So uh, combo meals, uh, like uh, combo meals, is going to have a little bit of uh, like uh, many meals. But if you uh, try to order uh, each one one of them individually, you're gonna be priced at a higher price than when you are uh, like ordering them or getting them uh, like in, in a combo. So, uh, is that a question or? Okay. Okay, guys. So, uh, the pros is it increases perceived value and encourages higher spending because, uh, let's say, uh, let's say you are trying to sell, um, okay. Uh, okay, like you have a shop that sells like sporting equipment, and you have like you're trying to sell uh, a football kit, right? So if the customer buys like just the jersey, you you could charge them a uh, hundred dollars. But if they buy the uh, and if they buy the shoes, like the the shoes to the shoes to play with. Uh, you could charge them uh, like another hundred dollars, right? But if they buy two together, they could get uh, like one hundred and fifty dollars, is like things like that. So, uh, like it encourages higher spending because you are like the customer is going to perceive that they are getting like uh, uh, a fifty dollar uh, discount, so they are going to buy it but it may reduce uh, individual product margins. So uh, like if, if, if this deal is there, uh, the, the probability that the customer is going to buy them individually is less. Okay, so uh, the next thing is geography, uh, sorry, geographical pricing. So this is just pricing based on location and local economic co conditions. So, um, I don't know if you guys use uh, Spotify. So when you use Spotify, like here in Africa, it's way, way cheaper than when you use it abroad, like in the Western world or like in Europe. For instance, uh, like if you use it in Ethiopia, in Ethiopia it's like uh, uh, $1, like, or not $1, like dollars and 50 cents but if you try to use it the premium one of course if you try to use it uh in the uk it's around 10 euros like something like that so it's way way much uh more expensive than here so this is called geographical pricing so different pricing for urban and rural areas like depending on the country depending on their economic condition and so on so it reflects the local market conditions, and but it's complexity in pricing structure. So you have to set different prices for each location uh, that there uh, that there is. So that's the con. Uh, so the premium pricing is just offering a basic uh, product for free while charging for premium. 
So like I've said earlier, you can take uh, like Spotify, um, YouTube also has a premium subscription and so on. Uh, so it allows like uh, the pro is it attracts uh, larger uh, user base because you have both the premium, the free, and the premium one, and uh, have sales potentials. But uh, monetization, uh, like uh, converting your users into like income, depends on converting free users to premium or to paid. So, uh, like. I know uh, I'm, uh, I'm using this a lot, but Spotify didn't make any money for, I don't know, uh, for a decade or something like, like that because they weren't monetizing uh, on, the, on their users. So they had a lot of free users, but not much uh, paid users, the users that pay. So that's a problem. Okay. Uh, promotional pricing, uh, okay, yeah, okay. Promotional pricing is just a temporary reduction, uh, like just a promotion to boost uh, sales, seasonal sales, coupons, and so on. So, much of like, uh, especially service based um, and some of product based, uh, like uh, companies or products could. Uh, give promotions, especially if you are a, like a new signing or a new customer, or you're trying to sign in. Uh, you are trying to sign up. You get uh, these things, right? So uh, if you are, if you when you sign up, you could get a voucher or a coupon or a discount and so on. So it increases short-term sales. It it increases like um, sign-ups. And you use this for that uh, se se season, but it can reduce uh, the value if it is overused. So, if you uh, give this uh, like discount more often, people are going to think that uh, okay, so this this product is not uh, like a high higher value. So. Uh, uh, okay, <laughs> okay. So uh, in Ethiopia, actually, when whenever uh, whenever uh, a product is uh, like uh, promoted a lot in TVs or like it is giving off a lot of uh, promotions, we have a saying that al uh, like which means um, they they are not selling uh, as much as they uh, like. They want, so they are promoting it more and more. So uh, people could have that kind of perception if you have, if you are uh, using this promotional uh, pricing. So the next thing is subscription uh, pricing, which charges uh, like every year or every month. So which is recurring fee for continuous access of uh, product or service. So. It's predictable, so as long as the, you have the users, they are going to pay. So you already have, uh, you already know your revenue stream. But it requires continuous value delivery to retain the service, uh, subscribers. So if by any means your uh, value drops or like you fail to deliver the point, the kind of value that you have promised then the users uh, are going to shift to other products that are, that offer similar uh, like uh, value so it's very risky okay i think we already have these two uh, so high low pricing is just setting high price initially and then lower, lowering to, uh, it through promotions and discounts seasonal sales and so on. This is similar to uh, promotion, but promotional pricing is uh, lowering it from the base, but high-low pricing is just has setting a high price initially and just giving them, giving the customer that uh, the satisfaction or the preserve, like, uh, like make them think that you have lowered the, the price by giving them discounts. So it attracts different customers, uh, like different customers over time. Uh, but 
customers may wait for discounts. So which reduces initial sales. So you can see Black Friday is a sales for, for this instance. So on Black Fridays, the sales is very high. And some of the times people actually may wait uh, for a year or for like a couple of months just waiting for this one time so this means it re reduces uh, the initial sales and the last one uh, on the list is captive pricing so this is just setting a lower price for the main product and a higher price for the complementary uh, product so uh, for instance this is uh, a, a perfect example actually printer and ink cartilage so you can buy the main component which is the printer for a lower price but uh, the the complementary products which is the ink is sold separately at a higher price right so uh, you're gonna pay they're going to get the, their mar margins with the complementary products so uh, so they are going to sell you uh, things uh, like uh, separately. So it attracts customers with low initial cost. So when you see it, you can see that uh, it's at a lower, like the printer could seem like it's a lower uh, price, but when you buy the printer and you buy the accessories, you're gonna see that uh, it's actually priced higher than what you have received. So, it attracts the customers, but the uh, customer is going to be dissatisfied uh, over high accessory costs. So that's a problem. So that's uh, just about it for the types of pricing strategies. Um, so do you have any questions, guys? Hello. Yeah, yes, sorry. Uh, okay, with that, uh, uh, okay, I just believe uh, I'm actually assuming, and kindly correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, I think uh, in future, an academy will start uh, offering prizes for these programs and sessions, eh? right? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. Yeah. So, what 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 kind of pricing is that? Because uh, for us, I think we are lucky that we have done it for free. Um. Okay. So I'm not sure. Uh, like you have to talk to uh, uh, Arun for uh, about this, but in my understanding, it's more about value pricing. In my understanding, or cost plus one of them. Okay. Okay, okay. The position that kind of okay, okay. Uh, any other questions, guys? Hello, any other questions, or is it clear? Okay, that's good. Here, okay. So, um, so what are the steps to deliver a uh, perfect or a better pricing strategy? So the first thing that you need to do is conduct market research, understand your customer, uh, have your customer persona, and what they are willing to pay, uh, what, is the, what is the value perception of your product, and so on. And then you are going to analyze costs. So you have variable costs, you have peer Pixel cost, you have the marketing cost, production cost, and everything. So you need to account that and you need to do the break even analysis. So uh, we have I have explained what break even analysis is, but for the students or for the trainees that weren't present yesterday, break even analysis means uh, is like when the company is operating at a net zero point. So they are not losing money, but they are not also gaining any money. They are not making profit and they are not uh, in a loss. So uh, it's net zero. So you, you need to have your uh, break even analysis in order to have your minimum pricing. So you cannot go uh, lower than that. 
either if you go lower than your break even you're gonna have to close your down uh, close down your company so the minimum is going to be your break even and uh, assess your competitions in the next step so uh, competitive pricing and positioning like where where are they positioned and what are their pricing strategies you need to understand that one uh, select pricing models and uh, choose the strategy uh, that aligns with your business goals from what we have seen earlier uh, then test and implement like i know uh, we are we are not going to do the, the, uh, this one for this uh, project but not normally you're, you're gonna test and uh, implement your chosen uh, pricing strategy if you if there is problem with your uh, pricing strategy you're gonna monitor it and adjust if need if needed so uh, the factors that influence pricing strategy could be the customer structure market demand your competitors or the competition the customer segments that you are trying to attract, uh, your brand positioning or uh, like the customer's perception of your product, like the customer's perception of your product's value, uh, economic conditions, especially in uh, in uh, poor countries or in uh, countries that have lower uh, economic uh, uh, capability, it could highly influence your pricing strategy and re regulations um, like um, some countries uh, i forgot the name but one country in europe i don't know if it's, if it's the netherlands or uh, i'm not sure but it has already set uh, like the percentage of profit that you can make uh, when you are selling in that country so uh, so these reg re regulations could actually uh, influence your pricing strategy. So if the pricing, like uh, the markup or the uh, profit margin is already set by the government, you don't have any other choice but to follow that regulation. So uh, some of the, um, some of the, like the mistake that we could make when uh, selecting the pricing strategy could be ignoring the market research, underestimating costs, Falling to uh, differentiate, appearing to differentiate customers, inconsistent, inconsistent pricing, and lack of flexibility. So you could go. Uh, so I, I might add a couple of more resources, but I have found these resources to be uh, good. So yeah, make sure to go through that. So uh, that's it for me. Um, so the floor is yours. No. Okay, Jala. Okay. So, uh, no questions, uh, guys. Uh, okay, I'm going to put that as a no. So, let me just stop recording.